uh, where uh, the Texas House uh, will soon be considering a bill that could outlaw discrimination when it comes to hair. A House Bill uh, 3, uh, first of all, I'm looking at the number here, the, it's called House Bill 392. Uh, the Crown Act. We've seen other states pass this. California was the first that outlawed discrimination based upon someone's hair. Uh, there have been a number uh, of folks uh, who have been fighting this. This impact African Americans uh, more so than anyone else. Joining us right now uh, from Austin, Texas, uh, is Representative Retta Bowers and also uh, my fellow Texas a and Aggie, Tashara Parker, who is an anchor at WFAA Dallas uh, Channel 8. Uh, she has been uh, quite uh, vocal about this uh, and talking about natural hair and her buns and her bun movement uh, and so we'll uh, we'll get we'll, we'll get to that in a second representative bowers i want to start with you i mean this is this is this is an issue that black women face i remember looking at I remember I was engaged in a debate with a Republican. Uh, they, were trying to, they were trying to tell me there's no discrimination in America. Then I went to the EEOC website and came across a story of a black woman who was a psychologist. She applied for a job at the Veterans, Veterans Affairs there in Virginia. Impeccable credentials. Great interview. When she walks out, a white guy on the panel says, I, I just don't like her hair. I did not like her cornrows. She didn't get the job. She sued. She won taxpayers had to pay nearly a hundred thousand dollars had nothing to do with her credentials nothing to do with her knowledge he didn't like her hair that is what a lot of black folks are facing we've had cases here in texas where young men have been kicked out of school forced to cut their hair because it didn't abide by someone's idea of what's acceptable i want to pull tashara in you mentioned Tashar. I want to pull her in, uh, Tashar. Uh, look, this has been a battle a lot of black women on television have had to deal with uh, for a very long time. Uh, and it's only recent, very recent, and I'm talking about the last two or three years, where you've seen yeah. more black women uh, being allowed to wear natural hair on television uh, because what we're dealing with, and this is what people have to understand, these are examples of the stuff that black people have to deal with just to be able to coexist in America. We have to we have had to conform to white standards when it comes to hair, clothing, how we talk, how we act. And this, I mean, you would think, why do you need to have a bill to say don't screw me because of my hair? But that's the reality we're living in. Yeah, it's sad in 2021 that we need any type of legislation uh, to make us uh, be allowed. And it's sad that we even have to say allowed, right, uh, to coexist in these exact same spaces. It's really because of that Eurocentric standard of beauty that has been perpetuated, um, not just in our industry, but in many industries, but certainly for women that have to be on you know, television and broadcast journalism all the time. And so uh, you're right. As of the last few years, yes, we've had women well before uh, the last few years wearing their natural hair on TV. But I think the movement has really gained steam. You know, the Crown Act certainly playing a role in that uh, in gaining steam across the, the country and even across the world. Because I'm actually uh, participating in something called World Afro Day. But anyways, I, I do feel like, you know, in the last few years, people have become more aware of it. And I think that's one of the reasons that I wanted to get involved, because. You know, it wasn't until I got into this industry that I realized that me changing my hair was considered a thing, right? You know, before then, black women, we change our hair all the time. These are styles that have been around for years. They're coming back in different forms, but these are styles that have been around for hundreds of years. And so that's why I thought it was important to get involved with it because, you know, that Eurocentric standard of beauty that you alluded to is something that's been around for far too long. And I feel like it's time for us to step up and, and you know, just be able to do our jobs without worried about being worried about, you know, how we wear our hair to work, we're going to be able to do the same type of work. And so, yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, I think it, time's up for all of that. And I think right now is the time to do it, especially with this legislation um, being discussed right now. <laughs> oh, Roland, let, let me be clear. You know, I'm still getting emails till this very day from folks basically saying, hey, I'm tired of y'all talking about black hair and professionalism, but we won't stop talking about it because I have a show that airs every Thursday on WFA ABC Dallas. It's called Rooted. And folks are tired of hearing about the, the, the black hair conversations that we've been having simply to make sure that we're bringing attention to the Crown Act and to make sure people are aware of these things. So the fact that I'm still consistently receiving those types of emails on a daily basis, if you go over to our WFAA Facebook page and look at some of the comments underneath the stories that I've been shared, uh, sharing, I heard Representative Bowers mention 
Dakari Davis, the dark police officer here in Dallas, who ended up cutting his hair because he was told the hairstyle, cornrows, braided hairstyle of black men, told that this hairstyle was unapproved and unprofessional. And so when you think about some of those comments and some of the things that are still happening right now, we know that this conversation needs to happen and we know that it needs to continue to happen because if I continue to get those emails, people are still leaving uh, those types of comments on, on social media and elsewhere. You know, it hasn't resonated. Even with the Crown Act, you know, I hate to say it, it still may not click to some people why this is an important topic. So I would hope that people would understand that this is important for everybody. Studies have already shown that when you're able to show up authentically as yourself, you perform better. So this isn't something that's just good for black women, black people, black children. This is something that's good for your company, your business. I know a lot of folks always talk about money as the bottom line. Well, hey, bottom line is if we're able to show up as ourselves, we're going to perform better. So I hope they consider that as we uh, continue to have these conversations. And like Representative Bowers you know, mentioned, regardless of what happens with the crowd, like we know what we want to happen. But regardless of what happens with it, I think this conversation needs to continue because people are still being impacted by this on a daily basis. All right. Tashara Parker, Representative Bowers, we'll appreciate it. Hopefully uh, it will get through the Texas House and go to the Senate and actually sign into law. Republicans, y'all can lose do one thing right this legislative session. Uh, we appreciate both of y'all. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Rolly. Bye. All right. Thanks a lot.